You know, each of you knows better than anyone your own NMO story. And there's no way that anyone else can fully appreciate the experience you've had nor the challenges you have overcome. But each of you have addressed your own challenges and will overcome them in your own way. And one of the things that's so powerful about the teamwork and the collaboration and the spirit brought to this room today and to the, the global solution to NMO is the power between a mother and a daughter. And in that respect, we'd like to invite Victoria Jackson and Ali uh, to come up and uh, provide their perspectives and answer a few questions, please. Hey everybody, we're not going to take too much time because coming up is going to be um, some of the pharmaceutical companies here and we're talking about clinical trials. But Allie and I wanted to see, a lot of times people have questions for the two of us and if there's anything I can answer for you about the foundation, things coming up, or just anything, any comments, this is just sort of, we wanted to give you a few minutes. Oh, Allie reminded me too, um, we have some exciting news that the two of us have been asked to participate. Uh, we're going in April to the Vatican. Um, so it's, um, right? I guess, I guess we could think about it from um, all of our collective's mouths to God's ears or the universe, whatever, we could think about that. But going to the Vatican and um, there's a conference that it's interesting, this Pope is doing on cellular therapies and rare diseases. And um, Katie Couric and uh, Robin Roberts from Good Morning America are there, and they're doing the interviews, and there's a lot of panels. I think the vice president's going, so Allie and I have been uh, asked to go and to participate, and we'll be being interviewed. And so, again, it's kind of amazing when I think, you know, yesterday or this morning I get to tell you about Google and their next door and then the Vatican. So, right, you never know what's going to happen in life. And this is all from somebody that was making lip gloss. So, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. anyway, um, maybe we could take a few minutes if anyone has questions. And, you know, a lot of times people don't always, you know, talk to Allie about anything. So, I thought we'd just kind of make it a little more homespun. <laughs> Let's start over here in the uh, back. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, also, thank you. I'm sorry this happened to you, but I'm not sorry because you're helping millions, so thank you for that. Um, when will we see y'all on TED Talks? Ah, you know what, it's so funny because um, I do go to the TED conference, my husband and I go to the TED conference, and um, I just recently bought a book, you know, how to give a TED talk. And, I've been uh, trying to get her to do this for a while, so thanks for bringing it up. Uh, so thank you for that. I, I do, you know, um, I think I've been more focused on the work, and so maybe when I feel that I can, uh, that I've got the work in a good place, we, I can talk about it a little bit more, but, you know, you've got to be, get your 10 minutes in, and I, to me it's been more about doing the work and being able to have enough to talk about that to me is meaningful and really until I have a cure I don't really want to talk about things too much. So. <laughs> Thank you though. Anybody else? In the back. Hello, Andrea Mitchell. I have a question for Allie. Um, the question is, have you participated in, in any of the STEM cell trials or do you plan on it for your site? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great question, and I thought that that might come up before coming up here, so I've definitely <laughs> been thinking about it. Um, yeah, I currently participate in, um, you know, some of the, you know, like circles and some of the other clinical trials. You know, I just did blood, you know, an hour ago, so um, I do that. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, I can't stand up here and, you know, we, we've been talking a lot today about encouraging patients to participate in clinical trials, and we can't, you know, we have to practice what we preach. So it's definitely, I, I take the same, you know, precautions and considerations as all of you. You know, what does that mean for, you know, my health, the, the treatments that I'm currently on, and, and all those sorts of things. So um, there's still a lot of the designs um, being done for some of the trials. I've been fortunate enough to participate in some of those conversations, which is really exciting. 
exciting. So being able to see the back end perspective of how they're created and how they're created with in mind patient's best interest and not only patient's best interest, um, but you know how that will, will lead to a cure. So I haven't committed to any other trials besides the, the circles project, which I just did, but um, I'm definitely taking the same considerations as all of you, so. Thank you, yes, I was very curious because there's a lot of different um, trials taking place and it's kind of hard for a patient to kind of say, okay, am I gonna participate in this one or that one because you're investing not only in the money that it takes, but you're also investing in your health and how you might respond. Yeah, and I can completely, I mean, it's not only sympathize with those concerns because I, I live them, I experience them, I'm making the same choices that you are. So, um, you know, I, I recognize that, but I've been privileged enough to see the experience of how they're being created, and I know that they're coming from a place of such careful thought and love and consideration. So I just feel that extra comfort because I know how that how it's coming from. But and I hope that we were able to translate that to you all today, um, how they're really being thought. So thank you for that. Other questions? Sorry, well, up in the front, please. This is also for Allie. Um, I have the Love reverse this. situation. My son is exactly your age. I'm the one that has NMO, and he's the one that lived through it at a young age when you were being diagnosed. So I, I can always relate, kind of. I know where you are, where you are, because of my son's, uh, you know, as he's progressed. I know you graduated from college. Yep. So what are you doing? Great question. I love talking about this. So uh, I graduated in uh, June from UC Santa Barbara. Uh, very excited. Thank you. Um, I got a, um, a double major in sociology and psychology, if anyone's curious. So that was fun. Um, and yeah, I graduated and I, my biggest regret was not studying abroad. So I wanted to travel. So I spent uh, most of the summer just backpacking through Europe with one of my closest friends. So that was really enjoyable. Um, and the prepar preparation of all my meds <laughs> and knowing where every hospital is in every city was, uh, was definitely an interesting uh, component to that. If anyone's, you know, had that struggle or can sympathize with that um, in needing to map out everywhere you're gonna be. Uh, but it was still, it was so much fun. So I, that's all I can say is, you know, if you're ever held back to travel because you think NMO is gonna hold you back, don't, don't let it, you know, really, you know, I worked so much with my doctors, you know, weeks in preparation to make that happen and I'm so glad I did. So just putting that out there. But now I'm working at a uh, startup, it's called TradeZ. It's a, a resale site for designer fashion. Had, um, no, I had no idea that my mom's uh, fashion instincts would play more into getting a job than my college degree, but <laughs> it, it turns out that was a little more helpful, but I love it. I, I do all of their email marketing and uh, it's been really great, so. We have a question right here, please. Uh, hi, I'm, <laughs> I'm Judith. And I had um, the MNO diagnosis twice. Um, I want to know if exercise has anything to do with the way you feel. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Uh, I've experienced, you know, in you know, over the course of, you know, it's been, gosh, eight years now. I've been diagnosed, um, and you know, personally, I, you know, have struggled with like calcium deficiency, and you know, bone density has been an issue for me, um, and so exercise and nutrition has been a really uh, important component to just my my approach to to the disease. I think that, you know, just the way we approach it in general is it's a holistic perspective. Um, so uh, I was, you know, I tried. Uh, gluten-free for a while, which I found really helpful in terms of a diet. Um, and again, everything I'm sharing is just my, my experience and it's, you know, everyone, um, you know, has different um, takes on this. So this is just me and I would encourage you to explore all, all options. But um, that has worked really well for me. And for exercise, you know, just to maintain, uh, you know, your bone density and health, I, you know, I work out three days a week and you know play te team sports and all that sort of stuff. Uh, also, you have to be very cautious because um, when I was first diagnosed playing high school tennis, you know, playing uh, in heat and could be a possible trigger and, and all that sort of stuff with inflammation. So I've always been very cautious uh, of that. So knowing your limits, knowing your body and just kind of, you know, trying those out to see what works best for you. So uh, that's been my formula. But like I said, it's really, it's really different for everyone. As we conclude these brief comments, maybe we could just ask Victoria to 
reflect on the last presentation yesterday because exercising the body is one part of it, but the mind and the spirit are also part. I think what Michael's talking about is, and you'll, it'll be in one of the breakout sessions, um, I really recommend is I do a meditation. So anything that is helpful in mindfulness or meditation, the breakout sessions are gonna be helpful for you to just learn different ways, you know, where if, if Allie does it in her way, you guys will have a different way where you just, you know, navigate through it. And um, I just found for myself, because um, people have said, how do, you, how do you kind of manage it all? And I, for me, meditation has helped. And I think learning about it, you learn from the science, how it's so meaningful, even in pain management. Um, and I did want to comment on what Ali said. It was interesting when we went up to Google, I, I did bring her from one of the meetings. And it was interesting. I thought, you know, come on, you got to come see Google. And um, not as cool as you think. <laughs> We were on their off campus, of course, you know. We're moving on to the main campus. But, um, but it is interesting that I like to always bring, and especially now, um, pharmaceutical companies that are here, um, it, it makes it very real, you know, and she could be sitting in the room really as the advocate for, well, why do you design it this way, or this probably would be better, as somebody in real time who's really experiencing this. And, and you're going to hear a lot of these trials, I mean, some of them are tough. You know, I can tell you because there's always the, before you even get into this field and you think about big pharma, you know, believe it or not, there's a lot of nice people, a lot of people in these pharmaceutical companies that are just trying to figure it out and do right too. And it's not easy because the FDA has certain requirements and there's certain ways in which these trials are designed that just some of them suck. I don't know how to say it better, but you know what? It's better than alternatives of nothing being there, and that's why you have to weigh it, look at it, talk about it with your families, and see, you know, and there's always going to be an element of a leap of faith. You just got to sometimes take that leap of faith. That's what this, this day is really all about. And I'm going to always keep telling you, hopefully everybody at some point will be walking across the hall to donate uh, today, um, because that's really, that is the lifeblood of this organization. Yeah. So. I mean, I think that that pretty much sums it up. And, you know, knowing from everything that we do all year round, everything that my mom says, I can just say, is she wouldn't give you all advice she wouldn't give to me. And so, I mean, I think that's just the sum of what I can say, is that we have these same conversations at home, and, you know, we're, we'd be as transparent with you all as she is with me. So this is, this is all the same thing. So thank you very much. Thank you.